Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. And we're going to continue today with an example on parallel resonance. We looked at this last time. Let's put some numbers in here and see what we get. We're going to start with a little current source. And that's going to feed a capacitor, 910 picofarads, and then a practical coil that consists of 50 millihenries with a coil resistance of 100 ohms. And we're going to say that this current source is a 2 milliamp current source. Our first goal here is to figure out what the critical frequency is, the resonant frequency. So F0 we know is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC. This assumes that we have a high Q system, Q of over 10. Remember, if the Q is a little on the low side, this frequency will actually be pushed down just a little bit. So we'll just make that assumption. Hopefully it'll come out to be true. Everything will be good. Otherwise, we can just go back and figure out that little K coefficient and see what the shift in the frequency is. Anyway, plugging the numbers in here. So we've got the square root of L, 50 millihenries, times C, 910 picofarads. And that's going to work out to 23.6 kilohertz. From this, we can figure out the reactance of our inductor. We know that XL is... 2 pi FL as far as its magnitude is concerned. So we'll just put the values in here and see what we come up with. 2 pi frequency is 23.6K and L is the 50 millihenries. So the magnitude of XL is 7.41 K ohms. Great. All right. Um, from here, we can figure out the expected value of Q coil. Now remember, the Q of the system cannot be any higher than Q coil. This sets the ceiling. So hopefully this is better than 10, right? Well, yeah, obviously it's going to be because this is X of L divided by R coil. That's 7.41K divided by 100 ohms and the Q coil is 74.1. So that's certainly a high enough value. Now, our equivalent circuit at this point, we can figure out uh, the, the translation, if you will, on our series uh, L R sort of combo here. You know, that's going to turn into something that looks like this. There's our capacitor. And then this pair, because it's high Q, the inductor stays at 50 millihenries. And then we get an R value over here. Remember this is our P, the transformed value of this. Right? So the transformed value of that R P is simply equal to Q coil squared times R coil. So RP over here, Q coil is 74.1 and R coil is 100 ohms. So RP works out to just about 550 uh, K ohms. It's actually to four digits, it's 549.5 K ohms. All right, so this is basically what we have now. We've got this 2 milliamp. We've got the, the 910 cap over here. So these two reactive elements are both equal to 7.41 K. And then we've got this RP over here that's equal to 549.5 K ohms. This is going to set the peak value of the impedance. Remember, our impedance plot 
looks like this. All right, so here's the magnitude of Z. It's going to start low, come to a peak, and then drop off. There's a resonant frequency for us. That's the 23.6K. And this impedance right here at the peak, that's the uh, total parallel resistance, RP in this case, roughly 550K, right? That's what we're looking at for that peak. And then it falls off on either end. Right? So we are interested in finding F1, the half power point on the low side, and F2, the half power point on the high side. Now, because there are no other resistances, the only resistance we have here is the transformed value of our coil, in other words, this guy right there, it must be the case that Q of the parallel network would have to equal Q of coil. All right? In other words, in our case, 74.1. Now, if we did have another resistance, Right? That would be in parallel, and we'd have to figure out a new RP value. And from that, we could then come up with um, a, a new value for, for the Q and so forth. But let's just, for now, we'll just continue where we are, and we can go back and look at that in a moment. In any case, um, we know what the system Q is, right? 74.1, so we can now go and figure out the bandwidth. Right? So remember, the bandwidth is the distance, if you will, between F2 and F1, but we can define that in terms of the resonant frequency divided by Q parallel. So that's going to be our F0, which is 23.6 kHz divided by 74.1. So the bandwidth is going to work out to 318 Hz. F1 will simply be half of this below F0. In other words, for high Q, we assume this just perfectly splits in half. It doesn't really, but for high Q, it's a very good approximation. So F1 is F0 minus bandwidth over 2. F2 is F0 plus bandwidth over 2. All right. So the F1 is going to be the 23.6K plus 318 over 2. All right, that's going to get us approximately 23.44. Oops. That's a 2 right there. And over here we've got 23.6K. Uh, oop, I did that backwards. Sorry, that's a minus sign, that's a plus sign. So bandwidth over 2 over here again is just going to be the 318 divided by 2, right? So that's, uh, what, 159, um, and that's going to work out to uh, approximately 23.76, roughly, kilohertz, all right? So that's these two guys up here, right? And this is the 23.44K. And this one right here is the 23.76. All right, so we have this pretty well figured out, you know, for the most part. Um, one other thing we might be interested in would be what we're going to see as far as a voltage across this. Okay? If you built this up in the lab, what would you wind up with? I got this nice 2 milliamp current source. Well, at very low frequencies, very high frequencies, in other words, when we're out here, you know, the Z of this parallel combo is fairly small. We're not going to see a very big voltage. However, at resonance, you know, these things largely cancel. And all we have left for resistance is this, you know, over half a mega ohm. Well, um, you put two milliamps into that, and you get a pretty high voltage, right? The, the voltage at resonance is simply going to be the two milliamps flowing through that impedance, the 500 and roughly, let's just call it 550k ohms. All right, so you're going to get approximately 1100 volts. That's a pretty healthy potential off of a 2 milliamp current source. All right, but that's, again, only at the resonant frequency. Are we going to see that? The other way that we could calculate this um, 
would be to use the, the uh, Q factor. In other words, we could say um, on, the, on the current end of it, you could say through the capacitor and through my idealized inductor, you're going to get a current that's equal to uh, your Q parallel times your source current. Okay, so we've got, uh, where are we, 2 milliamps, and our Q parallel is 74.1. So you're looking at around 148 milliamps there. Now, if you took that 148 milliamps and you passed it through X sub L or X sub C, you'd get the 1100 volts, right? The interesting thing here is you have this current that is just so much higher than your source current. And remember, that's because in our idealization over here, these currents are in perfect antiphase. So we kind of look at the, at the energy as sort of bouncing back and forth between these two things. Okay, it's like absorbing, dissipating, dissipating, absorbing, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. All right, so it's analogous to what we see in a series circuit with the, the voltage across the reactive components can be really high, much higher than your voltage source. In the parallel network, it's the current, right? The current really jumps up. Um, but of course, it is still possible, as we see, to get a pretty high voltage, right? So you could take this 1100 volts, this is a cross check, right? Take the 1100 volts, divide it by your X of L, 7.41K, and you, know, you should get that 148 mil. Either way you do it, right? You should get the same result. Okay, now what if we wanted to change the Q of this system for our particular application? Suppose um, this bandwidth is a little too tight, right? 318, ter uh, 318 hertz is a little too tight. What do I do? Well, you can always broaden something by adding resistance in parallel. You can't make it tighter. Now, if you want it to be tighter, in other words, if you said, oh, I, I need a 200 hertz bandwidth, let's say, instead of 318, that requires a, a higher Q, and of course, parallel Q, the system Q, can never be higher than the Q coil, so you're going to have to go and find yourself a better inductor. In other words, something with a smaller value for our coil at this particular frequency. Right? Remember, the, um, although it's, it's still true that Q coil is X of L over R coil, we have to remember that uh, for Q parallel, the general term for Q parallel, right? Because this is sort of this is a special case here, because we don't have an extra resistance. But the general case would be that uh, Q parallel is your R total, and we'll just look at this in a moment, divided by your X sub L. So in this case, it would be the 549.5 K for your R total divided by your X sub L of 7.41 K, right? that would also get you 74.1. This is, like I said, a special case because we don't have any extra resistance. But suppose we did, right? Suppose we had, you know, back here some extra resistance, you know, like uh, 100K or something, right? Just pull a number out of the air. What ends up happening? Well, that 100K is effectively in parallel with RP. So your R total, this guy right here, would no longer be 549.5K. It would be 549.5K in parallel with the 100K. All right, you know, so that's going to get you, you know, 80-ish K ohms. You divide that by the 7.41K, and now your system, K, uh, your system Q, your, your Q parallel, will have dropped, right? It will have dropped from 74, you know, down to... 12 or 14 or you know whatever it happens to work out to in the process by bringing that down you wind up fattening up this bandwidth this is going to come out right so like i said instead of having 74.1 here you know we get 12 or 13.6 you know whatever it works out to um, and this gets fatter and of course the side effect of that is these two frequencies wind up being pushed out right the f1 goes a little further out this way, the F2 goes a little further out that way. The peak of this obviously comes down. You know, whatever this works out to is your new peak value. So you get something that kind of goes like that, right? It's squished down. 
and there's your new peak right there right so you know 80k whatever it works out to um, f1 and f2 come out to here bandwidth increases there you go so you can always play with fattening this up and increasing your bandwidth just by throwing extra resistance in parallel right because that basically drops down your r total right so your r total as a general rule is you know whatever circuit resistance you might have in parallel with your transformed r coil in other words your rp right that's your general case so in this instance we didn't have one so our total goes to rp we can make this approximation and off we go right if we have an extra resistance we just throw it in we basically make the initial assumption that it's a high q system we go through the computations put this value in here now if when we get all the way through with this it turns out that you know q parallel is three we can go back and modify right remember the general form for this includes a coefficient k that we would need to throw in for very low k uh, very low q values um, the precise values for that the the computation for that we find in the text um, but it is a value less than one so the the low q value for f0 will be reduced very slightly but i will reiterate that that's sort of atypical i mean the whole reason you have a uh, parallel resonant circuit is to take advantage of this selectivity of this simple narrow range of frequencies that you can get you know for example classic example is trying to tune a radio um, there's all of these radio stations out there in the spectrum and you just want to get one of them so we can make this adjustable you know we could have an adjustable capacitor or something like that um, tune this up and down the frequency spectrum and pick out the particular radio station that we want Right, to be very simplistic about it, you could imagine something like this. You know, you've, if, if you got a spectrum analyzer and actually looked, you get an antenna, put it on the input of the spectrum analyzer, you know, you'd see a bunch of frequencies, a bunch more frequencies, bigger, higher, you know, all depending on how strong this, the, uh, the transmitter is, how close you are to it. But you'd have a bunch of these in your local radio stations. And now what we want to do I mean, they're all out there simultaneously, and they're all simultaneously broadcasting, and you want to get just one of them. So we, we want to take a circuit that has a response that kind of goes like that, right? And I want to be able to slide this up and down. So this way I can pull out a particular range of frequencies that correspond to that particular channel, right? And then I can listen to you know, the tunes of my preference, right? And hopefully that show will never end. There you go.